Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the HCL Link product. Today's topic is leveraging the Link REST API for Swift. Within the HCL Link portfolio of products, you will find packs that are specific to industry standards. One of those packs is the HCL pack for financial payments. In today's demo, I will be taking elements of this pack, notably the metadata, from the Swift part. I will use this metadata to build a map that can validate an MT950 Swift message and then expose that as a service using the REST API for third-party software to call. Here we are at the HCL Link 1.1 Design Server login screen. I'm going to log in and as you'll see I have one single project named Swift. Within that project I have a schema which is from the Swift pack part of the HCL pack for financial payments. The schema is Swift ISO 7775 for 2020. I've also got a couple of files in here, one called mt950.good and one called mt950.bad for testing. I need to create another schema now for general purpose use. I'm going to call this new schema generic. I'm going to add an item. I'm going to call that item text item and actually make it an item. I'm going to analyze this schema which is done and save. So there we go, we have a schema called generic for general use. Let's start on our first map. So we're going to create a map called validate MT950. Okay, so this map is going to have one source card. We're going to call it in one. I am going to use the file adapter and I'm going to use the mt950.bad.txt file. From the schema window I'm going to choose Swift ISO 7775 and the type I'm going to use I will find within the batch section under category 9 mt950 and that's the option I want. Click OK. Let's add that to the canvas. As you can see, this map has one input card now and is ready to run. So let's do that now. Let's click Save and Build. Build will take a moment. Build successfully and run. You will note that the map has reported one or more inputs was invalid. This is a warning code. So let's go into the map settings and say that all warning codes we want to be actually treated as fail codes instead. So that's all the settings done and I will save the map one more time and build and finally run. Okay, one or more inputs was invalid. So I believe the map is working perfectly. Let's change the settings to read the good file instead. In action properties, I'm going now to select the mt950.good file. And next and okay. So in theory, the map should complete successfully this time. Build and run. Run complete. We have a green tick. This is all good. Okay, this map is all well and good. It validates my MT950 for me, but it doesn't really report anything back because there's no output card. So let's write a wrapper map that can call this map and then give us some custom reporting based on what we need that will eventually end up as a result from our REST API call. So let's close this map for a moment and create a new map called report MT950. 
this map is going to need a source card. We're going to call this in one. We are going to read the file file first we are going to read the bad file. I'm going to turn on the rest input flag here because this will be useful later on when we come to use the rest API. The schema I'm going to use is generic and from the generic schema the object I'm going to choose is text item. Okay let's add that to the canvas. So we have one source card, let's add a target card as well. I'm going to call this out1 and this time I'm going to choose a file and we're going to write to a file called output.txt I'm going to turn on the rest output here as well and click next from the schema again I'm going to choose generic and text item okay let's add our source card back to the canvas I'm going to drag in one to out one and have a look at the rule. Okay, so that's not exactly the rule we, rule we want. The rule we want is to have a valid function so that it will do something and um, assuming that the map that it calls here is a valid step it will show you the result um, which hopefully will be a zero but if it doesn't do it will do some custom reporting. So let's have a run function here. We're going to run the map validate MT950 and we're going to use the echo in function to send into card one the content of this maps in one. So that's our run complete. Now we do the custom reporting part. So let's have the word fail and a colon and let's have last error msg function to actually give us the last error that was found. Um, Right, so mismatched the um, closing quotes there. One, two, there we go. Right, so we can save this map. We can build this map. And bear in mind that the input card is reading the bad file at this point. We can run this map. The map has completed successfully, which is great. And on the output card, we have our custom reporting fail one or more inputs was invalid. Now bear in mind that is actually normally a warning but because we set the settings in the other map to set it as a fail it has actually come up um, and, and we haven't got the result of the run which would have been a 28 instead it's converted it to a fail we have got the uh, fail do the second part of the valid and it's reported fail one or more inputs was invalid which is the, uh, the warning originally. Okay, so this map is ready to deploy onto um, the REST API now. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you what happens when we set the input file to read the good file instead. Um, action properties, there we go. Let's get rid of that and let's pick a good.txt next. Okay, I'm going to um, save and build and run map has completed successfully and on the output side this time we should get just a zero which we have which is great okay time to um, deploy this onto our rest API so let's close that and go back to the home screen for a moment let's open the rest API pages first just to show you that there's currently nothing deployed um, Okay, here's the Swagger Endpoints page. Um, and let's duplicate that tab and have open api.json. This is the uh, Swagger documentation page. So from the Endpoints page, you can see that nothing is currently deployed. Back on our server, if we have a look at our deployment area, you will note that I have got one server defined called Local REST API. And if we bring up the properties to that, you will note that the IP address dot four matches my design server. The H, uh, design server and the um, link REST API are both currently deployed on the same uh, machine. 
Okay, so let's go back to home and into the deploy area again and let's have a look at packages. We don't have any defined right now, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to call this package one. From my project menu, I'm going to choose Swift and within maps, I'm going to deploy both maps. So now that the package has been built, I'm going to actually deploy that to a running local REST API definition there. Hit the deploy button. The deploy happens, the deploy is successful. And if we now go to our endpoints page and refresh, you should see that we have two maps, validate MT950 and report MT950 to be run either synchronously or asynchronously, giving us four entries. Now the one we're going to run is report MT950. So let's try that out now. I'm not gonna bother giving any special entries. I'm just gonna hit the execute button and it will probably fail because the input won't be found. So here we go, error, source not available. Okay, but that's not important because I need to actually copy this curl command and actually execute this API from the Windows command line, adding something extra to the command to send it a file. Okay, so let's go to the T Okay, um, I'm now going to add on the beginning part of the curl command to this extra piece of string that I'm going to add here. Copy that to my clipboard. And now I'm going to paste that back to my command line and we're gonna have a look at it. So my curl command is the same as what the swagger gave me, but at the very end, I've got an extra um, argument, dash dash data dash binary. And then within double quotes, I've got an at sign and I'm passing in an mt950.good.txt file, which is on my local file system here. And when I press enter, this is going to make the API call. Um, the validation is going to happen. And then if it's a good file, I will get a zero response. And if it's a bad file, I should get some reporting. So let's try the good file first. There we go. The API um, has been called. This is running on a remote machine. The validation has been done and I've got my zero response back. Let's fire that up again with the bad file this time. There we go. And this time I have my custom reporting coming back from my REST API call. Now, using curl is not particularly uh, fancy or anything, but the point is that any application that can make a REST API call, be that Application Connect Enterprise, or something else, or even a piece of Java code, anything that can make a REST API call um, can leverage the power of um, HCL Link 1.1 and the uh, financial payments pack, specifically uh, had to demonstrated here the Swift section to validate uh, Swift messages even if they don't have that capability built in themselves. And that's the end of the demonstration for today. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative please hit that like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as I release relevant material such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you.